Welcome back. And uh, hopefully if you see an animal that uh, you saw just on the screen moments ago, you're interested, please give the shelter a call. 447-7878 or stop by visit us at 214 Barker Road or 301 Stockbridge Road in Great Barrington. And uh, Karen, right before break, you know, we talked about, you know, the traditional humane education programs mm -hmm. that most people are familiar with is going into the classrooms. Um, and also, just to, before we get into that, a little flip side of that is sometimes you go into the classrooms and it's reciprocated because then I see buses in front of the building all the time. Yes. The kids come in and do it. So do you do two programs with those type of classrooms? Yes, or? we do. Um, what we have are tours uh, for sometimes this, the classes can come back and have a tour. And um, we include a video. So it's uh, we go more into animal safety. And then we usually, um, sh you know, of course, show them all the animals at the shelter, how they're well taken care of and how everything is clean and um, and nice. And, and that the animals, they are all get, you know, they stay as long as they need right. to to get a home. Yep. So the kid, it really Dispel makes... a lot of those myths. That are out yes, there. I'm, I try very hard. But the other thing is we also get the teachers and we get the parents to come along as chaperones so we're also yep. teaching the parents absolutely especially what we're going to talk about now yes. as well and um, that is tours because I know that uh, we have our managers meetings on a weekly basis and everybody's got their pens in hand because it doesn't seem a day or a couple days go by where you're not giving a group which is more than just classrooms if you want to talk about uh, the fac uh, facility tours. Right, so. and then I can show them the grooming rooms, and um, I usually show the community food bank, which is where uh, children from you know schools are able to raise uh, food for us and bring it in, and how important that is to help keep yeah. you know pets in homes. So um, they get to see what their hard efforts are doing because many of these children do bring in donations, and I like right. them to see what's being used with them and how their donations right. being spent because. Tours, you know, we talk about classrooms as well, but we've got religious groups that come in. We've got Boy Scouts, Girl Scouts, uh, kids that do lemonade stands, um, and different groups like that. So you're able to reach those type of Correct. other yes. community groups right. by giving them tours as well. Any youth group is, um, you know, encouraged to come. Right. And then probably the thing that we're most noted for, I think we're most noted for, and one of the most popular programs we have out there in regards to main education is that of our summer program, our summer oh, yes. camp program where um, you've been doing it for eight years now and yes. uh, it's changed a little bit. It has. And uh, why don't you tell us about summer camp a little summer bit. Summer camp. When I came on I think it was three weeks um, and uh, now we're up to five and we have from uh, fourth grade all the way up to eighth grade because I do think that um, we you know the older kids need to have something so to So fourth grade has their own week. It's a one week program one week. from what time? Uh, they start nine to three daily, yep. um, Monday through Friday. Friday being a uh, parents kind of program in the afternoon. Um, so we have every every grade has its own week and every grade gets a little bit, um, you know, more advanced and, and uh, uh, just a little harder for the kids right and, um, and we do bring in presenters every week and we've really we've knocked it out of the ballpark with our presenter they're yeah. great <laughs> can, can you give us some examples of some uh, of the presenters you would bring in I have let's say I have a fifth grader and I'm, uh, you know there's many camps out there, there and uh, why should I be choosing the Berkshire Main Side camp? well I really um, I choose groups like um, the zoo on the go out of um, West Springfield because they they actually bring animals that were pets that people had you know shouldn't have had as pets and they'll bring them in and say because they've rescued them. So I try and keep with that idea just because you can have a pet, maybe it's not a good idea to have that particular right. pet. And we learn about exotic animals and having them and the responsibilities that go what along. What are some of those animals that have come in? Oh, snakes, John. I know, I know. That's I knew where you were going, Karen. <laughs> I know. But um, some of my favorites are the, you know, we have some tortoises come in and they usually wear diapers. Um, yep. <laughs> and yep. I've had llamas in the classroom. And um, scorpion, there's, you know, some people have had scorpions or bearded dragons, and we, we and, do and look at that. And I know one of the most popular programs or presenters you bring in is the, the Birds of Prey. <sighs> yes, just going to mention, um, she's awesome, uh, and she does co it's uh, Birds of Prey, and it's all... All wildlife, rescue. all rehabilitated yep. that she um, brings in, including little owls up to a golden eagle, which just, yep. and, and right in the classroom. So um, the kids get to see them in action. So, you know, and it's, again, it's rehabilitating wildlife and learning that there are other, you know, creatures out there that need yep. our help. Are you able to take advantage of some local talent? 
to bring into camp as presenters? I have Dr. Looney, who's come in from, um, you know, a, she, and she's she has been a, a guest in our show. She has, and she brings in the parasites. The yep. kids love parasites. They love looking at all the icky things and her samples. Um, that's great. We do have, uh, as I said, some llamas from area farms. I do have some chickens that come in. Goats. People, goats. Um, Miss Martin brings in her yep. goat, and she showed them how so to do some So it's it's more felting. than about dogs and cats yes. and. We get into, uh, <laughs> I know you have different programs on some wildlife programs as well. I have, um, um, you know. The Berkshire Pleasant, Museum is a partner with right, that Right, they're well. the ones that bring the scorpions in. Yep. Uh, Pleasant Valley comes up and teaches about beavers. Um, and I do have um, a couple of wildlife friends who come in and show banding eagles, just so you get an idea that there's a lot to um, animal, you know, taking care of animals and being right. responsible. For yep. It's your more than about domestic. dogs and cats. Exactly, exactly. It. It's a lot of fun. The parents want to come. <laughs> okay. Um, you know, are you talking about summer camp too, um, cost? What's the cost this year? It's um, $250, and um, that's, uh, that includes a, a lot of really fun things like T-shirts and, and uh, a lot of lots, giveaways. Of, lots of giveaways. We do arts and crafts projects, and we usually do some portraits of dogs that we have in. We actually have d live models come in, and the, the kids can sit there and uh, paint portraits of a dog. Um, did I mention the favorite thing is actually washing the dog day? Wednesday afternoons is wash a dog day. day. Everybody goes home wet and happy, Aha. including the dogs. <laughs> so it's about, it's two hundred fifty dollars, and let's say you know what the economy's tough. You know, not everybody's working out there. You know, is there any scholarships or yes. assistance that are available for that? We do have some scholarships. We're able to get some um, some money so we can have reduced tuition or just help those that um, that really deserve to come, and we want them to, and we'll, we'll, we can you know. Give them something towards the tuition. Okay. Yes. Um, the dates. What, when are we starting? Uh, we're starting July 11th. Will be the fourth grade, and then we go th to the second week of August, and that's where we end up with the eighth grade. Okay. Um, so we know we have some scholarships that yes. people are available. Um, obviously, there's still openings because I know that right now, um, in the beginning of the year, we open up just to membership. Correct. And then sometime in April, I believe, we say it's open to the, the general, general public. public. My fourth grade is pretty well fit. I only have a, a few, very few openings left, but um, the others have got some. So room. we have some openings in all on right. all, all grade levels. Fifth and sixth is good. Um, seventh and eighth, we do a few less, um, uh, you know, students because we do field trips, so we need to keep our numbers a little bit yeah. smaller. But yeah. where does this take place? This in the classroom. It's yeah. we take over. We take over the building basically. Um, it's in the classroom. We have enough room for about twenty plus our uh, counselors. And, uh, and then, of course, we have the animals coming into the classroom, but it all happens in the classroom. Classroom, and of course, the kids have shelter time as well. They do, yeah. They get to meet a lot of different animals. Now, probably your newest humane education program, and I want you to make sure that we touch base today a little bit about who you're really educating during oh, birthday yes. parties. Oh, yes. You know, we started birthday parties, what, entering our third year, second I year? I think it's more like fourth, even. It? Yes, it's, so been, it's, been a long, it's been a while now. Uh, birthday so parties. Birthday parties. It, it started really because, um, you know, we just, we had a dog we were giving a birthday party to. We'd been there a year, and somebody said, oh, are you doing birthday parties? And I said, well, that's a great idea. And so we started, and we have them on Saturdays and Sundays. We average maybe 50, 40, 50 a year, yeah. I think. And um, it's uh, it's really for the parents. Mm -hmm. We find that the kids stay um, there with the, uh, well, the parents stay with the children, and right. we have more parents than we do kids sometimes at the party. Yeah. We do about 15. Is and you're talking about the Humane Society and what we do. We are do doing everything that I do yeah. and a kind of condensed version of my tours. Yeah. We do a tour. We do a video. We have games. Um, we have the party dog comes in and plays with the kids. And parents are responsible for the food and paper goods. So the parents bring the food. They bring the paper yes. goods. You have your classroom all set up and we decked do. out for a birthday party. Very decorative. And we have goodie bags, and we give a T-shirt for the child. And um, the best part is when the kids come in with, with instead of bringing presents for the little, you know, the get, uh, party person, yeah. they actually bring them for the animals. And then we go and give the animals their presents. You know what's interesting about that, too, is that you pick up the newspaper every day, and you read about what kids are doing bad from potentially, you know, turning over cemetery mm -hmm. issues and... And, and who's doing what and with the drugs that are out there and everything else. But 
I think what people don't realize, there are so many great kids in this community. Yeah, they They're are. doing such great things. And here you have an eight and nine and a 10 year old passing up birthday gifts in exchange for don't bring me any gifts, bring gifts for the shelter. Yeah. And uh, I know I've come in on after a weekend and seen just large amounts of donations that these kids that are extremely generous. So it's a lot of great things going on. Our kids are doing a lot of good stuff out there these they days. Are. I think people just have to pay a little bit more attention to that because yeah, we've got kids. a great community with a bunch of great kids. And they love animals. Kids and animals, you can't go wrong. Okay. People are going to want to know, Karen, birthday parties, what's it cost? Ah, it's about, um, it's $125, um, and that's for a basic party of about a, of 10 And then we can go up to about, it's $10 per it's child 10 after per that. It's 10 per child. Yes. And, but when you say a basic party of 10 you're not talking the adults and the sometimes no. older siblings. No, and they're, they up. actually come, they're, it's just the, the kids themselves. We do it based on how many goodie bags we give out. So, and it is a lot of fun, it really is. And I think the staff enjoys it and they, they bring the cats out for the kids to play with and, and it's, it's a good time. I know you're pretty booked with that as well. So I uh, am. Many, many phone calls We only do that. it during the school year now because we have camp during the summer and it's so popular, yeah. Okay. As you know, Karen, I know we talked about a previous show. Terry was here, I believe, last month and we talked about volunteer opportunities. And my guess is your main education programs that you need and would love some more volunteers. We could, we could use them. They've got to um, be willing to to work some kind of crazy hours because if you're going into a school, you right. know, and it's it's not a set pattern, so that's the hard part. Um, but I would love to see some more. I have been finding um, some help with parties, and um, and I am I'm, I'm working at trying, you know, a little bit of hand picking. But if somebody's mm -hmm. really interested in it, they've got to be willing to learn a lot and go along with me yeah. for a while because right. I did. I went right. and trained for quite a while and it took a while to get um, to get well versed in what all the programs are at Berkshire Maine. You've got to know about our spay neuter cat snip because these are part of what you're going to be right, teaching talking. to the children about. So, yes. Now you know we talked about you know I think when we talk volunteers everybody's thinking of adults at the moment but I know summer camp would not run without our counselors. Oh, and yes. our counselors are high school age kids mm -hmm. that you bring in to assist you with 20 or so children <laughs> yes. every single week and uh, they certainly make camp work. Are you needing some school, uh, high school age children for um, counselors this year? Are you in good shape? Or I'm looking, for, you know, I'm always looking for those really great older 16 year olds um, that could help be, uh, you know. When, great on their college resume. Yeah, it looks great on their college resume. The other thing is my, um, many of the kids after eight years of doing this, I have them, the campers coming back to be counselors with now. With the younger kids. And, um, and that's incredibly rewarding to know that you've done such a good job with them as campers that they want to come back and uh, be part of, of camp on a different, you know, level. How do people get a hold of you? They, whether they want to oh. sign up for camp, we should let them know about the website, your phone number. Why don't we give them some information? I'm at extension 29, uh, Karen Carlberg. Um, it's kcarlberg at berkshireumaine.org. And um, that's, you know, those are, those will all work. Yeah. Uh, I'm sure our great <laughs> graphics people have them I up know on they the screen. Do. Anytime. They're probably already there. I gave them to her earlier. So, because uh, you have to watch it. Just spell, spell Carlberg right and you're all set. That's all it. All right. Yeah. Well, Karen, thank you very much for coming and not only talking about traditional but humane education, we also learned a lot about birthday parties and tours and summer camp, which we have openings for. And again, if you're interested in any of that, you can give the shelter a call at 447-7878. Karen's extension is 29. We're going to take a break because we have some special guests that will be joining us coming up momentarily. So we'll be right back.
Welcome back. And uh, we have a very special guest here with us, besides Lindsay Hermansky from, <laughs> from, from the K-9 staff. Who do we have here with us today, Lens? We have Steve. Um, his full name is Steve Anthony Daniels. Um, he was actually a stray of New York, just right over the border. Um, so we kind of have no information about him, don't know his history. We're estimating probably around eight years old, so he's definitely a senior guy. But He looks don't... like one happy dog. Oh, yes, he definitely is. He, he's out an awesome dog. You know, for a beagle, he's very outgoing. Um, he likes to stick to his nose like most beagles, but actually he doesn't quite have a bark like most beagles do. He's been very quiet at the shelter. Really? That is quite interesting, Steve. <laughs> Have you done anything special with Steve lately? Actually, we did. Um, he, me and him actually went to the Humane race. Um, we actually did the walk, and he finished awesome. Um, he actually met all the dogs there and ne didn't have an issue at all. Um, so he's a very good dog, very social. Everybody loved him. All right. So if anybody's interested in Steve, actually, before we get into some contact information, Lindsay, what else do we have at the shelter? Um, we actually have a lot of dogs at the shelter. Um, we have another senior dog named Wonka. He's an eight-year-old pit mix. Um, he's actually been at the shelter for quite some time. Sadly, not too many people looked at him um, just because of his age and his breed. But, you know, he's been at the front desk all the time, yeah. and the front desk staff love him. Um, we have another um, young pit bull. His name is Chaos. He's about a year. Um, he just came to the shelter, so he's new. Um, we also have another pit bull named Ortiz. Um, he's about four years old. Um, he's not doing quite well in the shelter. He doesn't like the shelter life, so we definitely want to get him out sooner than later. Um, and another one, we have a big boy at the shelter. He is an eight-month-old St. Bernard. I saw him this morning. He's only eight months? <laughs> he's only eight months and 126 Ooh. pounds. So you it's definitely a, it's have to... A, it's a girl, right? No, it's a boy. It's a boy? So he's going to be a big boy. <laughs> yeah, he's in the, well, eight months. Wow. His name is Popeye. His name is Popeye. <laughs> yeah. Wow. <laughs> So if anybody's interested, anybody might have talked about, they could give us a call at 447-7878. Your extension, Lindsay, it's is? 26 and it goes right to the kennel office. Yeah. Huh. Or they can always look online at www.berkshiremain.org. And I'll tell you, Steve has been a staff favorite. We don't understand why he's still there. Super guy. And uh, hopefully if you're interested in anybody, please give the shelter a call. And uh, I've got one more special guest coming up our way. And, uh, you know, earlier Karen and I were talking about, you know, it's more than about dogs and cats. And uh, here to prove my theory correct is Erin Starja from the feline staff and small mammal staff. And today she has another special guest with us. And who might we have here, Erin? This is Spike. He's a two-year-old Marshall ferret, which means he was neutered and descented when he was a baby. So he's a very sweet boy. <laughs> very curious. Ah, a little couple characteristics about him or? Uh, he is very mellow as far as ferrets go. Um, like I said, he is very curious. He's not quite as playful as, as your standard ferret. Um, they do tend to play at dusk and dawn though, so they're definitely one of those early and late birds and they sleep during the day and in the middle of the night, which is good. And I know they love companionship. A lot of times they, they get along quite well with each other. Yes, they, um, they generally do best in pairs, but he's been uh, just him his whole life, and he's done fine, and he's very sweet and sociable. So. And having had a sharing my life with a couple of them for, for quite a few years, they are animals that if you, they are running loose in your home, which they need to get out and get their exercise, they also need to be supervised because they can get themselves into some trouble, into some furniture, and, and many other things. But normally they, they tend to be um, very friendly, outgoing, and make great companions again, but uh, you gotta be supervised when they're out and uh, strictly indoors, I'm sure. Absolutely, yes. They, uh, they also need some vet care. They do need rabies and distemper annually, so they're not, not quite like a bunny, a little more okay. work on the vet side of things, but definitely worth it. Okay, well, Erin, anybody's interested, they can give us a call, 447-7878, your extension? 24. All right, well, thank you. Well, that will do it for this week's Per Wag Adopt show, but before we go, you know, we talk about, anybody knows the Berkshire Main Society? We have that nice, pretty building, um, and you know, that has saved many lives because we can house so many more animals in our old facility, but still, if the Berkshire Main Society is not putting programs out in the community that are keeping pets from coming in, we could have the nicest building in the world, and uh, that's still not ending and solving the pet problems out there. So hopefully you learned a little bit about our humane education programs and how our humane education programs are helping to combat this pet problem that we have. So thank you for watching Per Wag Adopt. Hopefully you'll tune in again next time. Thanks for watching.